Okay. So what's happened or is happening with burner technology today relating to improving the overall efficiency of the fuel burn while lowering NOx production? Well, it can actually be reduced, at least for our purposes today, to these two categories of burner designs. Low NOx burners and flue gas recirculation are also known as FGR. And sometimes these designs are even combined in order to achieve optimum NOx reduction results. So let's take a look at, at some of the design specifics. And let me start by saying again how important it is for these burners to be properly matched to the furnace that they are firing into in order to achieve maximum combustion and low emission results. So as you know, and as we previously discussed, we need air for combustion and providing that air for combustion, of course, is the burner fan. A large one, as you can see here, but in reality, and regardless of size, the combustion air fan as part of the burner package is actually a centrifugal pump delivering air for the chemical reaction for combustion to occur. Now, the air has to be regulated as the heating or process load varies from low to high fire. And that's accomplished through the use of mechanical dampers, several types of which are shown on the screen now. So starting in the, the lower left corner of the screen, you see the multi-vane damper with the multiple blades connected to commonly driven but independent and adjustable linkage arms used to regulate the amount of incoming air based on the, uh, the amount of fuel uh, that's coming in or being burned. Now next you have the rotary damper as part of a gun burner and using a single contour damper, the contour of which when driven up or down makes the adjustment on the amount of air being delivered. And then on the upper right corner of the screen you have another gun burner but using a damper arrangement and that incorporates an adjustable but fixed damper blade and then another blade connected to an adjustable drive for varying the air supply between low and high fire. And then lastly, oh, and I might mention, all of these air regulators uh, I've described so far have inlet dampers, meaning the air is being pulled through them by the centrifugal fan. Now in the case of the damper in the lower right, this is a discharge damper, meaning the air is coming in from the top as indicated by the fat green arrow and the rotary sleeve within the housing has contoured openings and as it rotates through a single drive mechanism it regulates the air based on the required firing rate. You'll find this type of, of an air regulator or dampering system in boilers using an integral front head where the burner is mounted within its own combustion air wind box and I'll show you what, uh, what that is just a, a little bit later. Okay, so we, we know we have the combustion air and that it's regulated. Now let's take a look at the business end of the burner, the part that, that delivers the turbulence that we need for, for mixing the air and the fuel and then creating the heat where the pilot will initially volatize this mix. Now looking at the picture on the screen now, you see how the fuel is delivered through a series of gas lances or a single oil nozzle in the case of burning either light or heavy oil. This of course would be a combination burner. So now we have the fuel and air and to mix it we need turbulence and that is provided by the diffuser which encounters the inrush of high pressure air behind it and with its fixed fins causes a pressure drop, spinning the air, thereby creating the turbulence that we need for mixing the fuel and air together. Okay, so we have fuel, we have air, and we have turbulence. Now we need heat to combust the mix. And that comes from the pilot pictured on the screen. And of course, it is lit by an electric spark initially and then stands lighted through the main proving sequence which would be the flame scanner proving the main flame is stable. The pilot remains lit for this entire duration. And here's another example of a smaller burner and it happens to use both a diffuser and a baffle plate for 
for inducing the turbulence for mixing the fuel and air, and the pilot is also shown for igniting the mix. And here's the entire high efficiency, low NOx gun burner assembly, all packaged and ready to be installed on the furnace of the boiler. Note it has all the major components that we just discussed. Uh, they're all included and they're labeled. So you see how they all interrelate and come together. Now, this would go on about a 200 horsepower boiler with a rating of about 8 million BTUs per hour. And then here's one for a much larger boiler. Let's say it's about a 2,000 horsepower with a rated input of about 84 million BTUs per hour. And here it is mounted, this large burner, in a water tube boiler's furnace. And as I've been stressing all along, this burner has to be properly matched to the furnace in order to achieve the time required for combustion to complete, and also to make sure the flame fits within the confines of the furnace without impinging on the furnace wall tubes. And the way that is determined and engineered today begins with computational fluid dynamics, CFD, wherein the flame dynamics are analyzed to fit just about any furnace geometry, spanning the range as you can see on the screen now, a ratio of one and a half to one, three to one, or five and a half to one. And computational fluid dynamic programs go beyond calculating the length and diameter ratios. These computer programs will also foretell, based on mass flows of fuel and air, what the velocities and temperatures will be as the flame progresses down the furnace. Remember, to mitigate NOx production, we need to limit temperatures without quenching the flame while at the same time limiting the amount of time the combustion process lasts within the furnace. And combined with computational fluid dynamics, is another software-based engineering tool that we use today, and that is called Finite Element Analysis, FEA, which is a sophisticated mathematical analysis tool uh, proving that what was determined with the computational fluid dynamic interplay is also legitimate. And when looking more closely at the dynamics and factors that go into the development of a high-efficiency low-nox burner, you will recall, for instance, one of the factors is the mass flow and velocity of the fuel and air mix and the staging of combustion to assure the proper results. Say, let's just say that we're looking for 60 parts per million NOx and no more than 15% excess air. Well, it begins with, with properly injecting the fuel, starting with a, a fairly rich mix in the beginning and then turning on itself with a staged gas supply to minimize the prompt NOx formation. The main gas injectors are then supplying the majority of fuel further into the furnace. While we simultaneously mix this fuel with air as it also is being injected into the furnace. And they all mix together while the combustion is completed. Now as I said, this is to achieve say 60 parts per million NOx in the burner by itself without any other assistance while remembering burning natural gas is in a standard burner will give you about 120 parts per million, not 60. So what do we do when the locale or specification calls for something much lower? Let's say 20 parts per million NOx or, or maybe even less than that. Let's say it's less than five. What do we do then? Well, in these cases, we have to use some additional equipment. And one of the most popular solutions is what is referred to as flue gas recirculation, FGR. And for my explanation of this, I'm using the integral burner I said earlier I would show you, including an integrated combustion air wind box and discharging the air above the centrifugal fan that we spoke of earlier. In this case, in this case what we are doing with FGR is to take some of the stack gas before it exits the boiler through the vent stub and mix it with the combustion air, thereby increasing the combustion air's temperature, reducing the density, but also cooling the flame without quenching it. This will take the NOx down to as low as four to five parts per million in many natural gas-fired applications, 
provided the right burner and furnace engineering went into the design. Now, what I'm showing you in this visual is a fire tube boiler with a maximum horsepower capacity of about 2,500 horsepower. Now, the same FGR principle can be applied to larger boilers like IWTs using the high efficiency low NOx burner that we looked at before and incorporating a special blast tube for delivering the FGR and combustion air mix as shown on the slide now. Okay, that's fine. But what do we do today when the job calls for less than four parts per million or maybe even close to zero NOx? Well, in these cases, the choice is most likely to use what is called selective catalytic reduction or SCR. As you can see on the screen, this system is mounted at the outlet of the boiler and before the exhaust stack. It includes the use of a reactant, normally anhydrous or aqueous ammonia, working in conjunction with the catalyst bed, which is used then to remove the remaining NOx emissions beyond that which was removed by the FGR system during the combustion phase. Now, these systems have been proven to reduce NOx to almost zero. And as emission regulations get even more stringent, they are coming into play more and more. The key in all of this, though, be it fuel or emission reduction, is making sure the boiler's furnace and burner are matched. You can't just slap any burner on a boiler and expect it to perform optimally. It needs to be properly engineered and properly applied. So, here are a few takeaways from today's session. Thermal energy is energy in transit. Heat energy travels as a result of temperature change, the delta T. Latent energy is usable heat energy. Sensible energy is condensate. Return condensate as hot as possible to save energy. Remember, every 10 degree rise equals 1% improvement in efficiency. We transfer heat radiantly, convectively, and conductively. Boilers are rated at 100% firing rate, zero gauge pressure, and 212 degrees Fahrenheit feed water temperature. Lowering the feed water temperature will lower the boiler's output. Burners are set at approximately 15% excess air to maintain the highest safe efficiency. Ambient air and barometric changes can unknowingly affect the burner's excess air. Improper combustion causing the burn to go rich can generate soot and CO, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide must be limited to no more than 50 parts per million. We look for zero. There are three types of prompt knock, uh, of knocks. We have prompt, we have thermal, and we have fuel bound. Fuel bound is not controlled thermally, requires a synthetic liquid fuel to be burned. Thermal NOx is the most prolific. Controlling NOx requires low NOx burners, FGR, and possibly SCR. Maximizing results for, for efficiency and lowering emissions requires the burner be matched to the furnace. And with that, those are the summary points for today's session. I hope you got something out of it, that you enjoyed it, and we thank you so much for your attention.